Everybody, this is Tracy here with another edition of a view from Tracy's point and we are here with a really short video um, to give you guys an update on what's going on in the Minnesota case if you guys remember um, the state of Minnesota had decided to bring charges against um, R. Kelly you know following the bandwagon and there was much debate over the past few years as to whether or not that case was still active. Some people were saying that the case had been thrown out like two years ago. And then others like myself couldn't find anything saying that that case had been thrown out. And after he was convicted in the Northern District of Illinois case, the Hennepin County attorney, I guess it would be like the state attorney, was questioned as to whether or not they were still going to follow suit with their prosecution and they said that they would have to think about it, but that meant that the case was very much still open and that the rumors about it having been dismissed were not accurate. And so I had given you guys an update on the civil suit because the person that they were trying to bring these charges up on was also suing him. And I'll drop the video link above so you guys can get that information. Um, basically, the woman sounded like she wasn't there all the way. She was living off of disability. I think she was 17 years old and she couldn't get a ticket to get into a concert. And so she ran into Mr. Kelly and ended up going upstairs and grinding on him. Child, it was like a mess. But anyway, she was suing for emotional distress, saying that the reason um, she has never been able to work is because of the trauma that she experienced when she was the one that went looking for him and went to his hotel room and um, did like a little dance for him. I don't even know if they had intercourse. I think she... They were like grinding on each other, child. It was a whole mess. But anyway, that's that situation. And so Malcolm X Panther, who is one of my subscribers, shared with me yesterday that on the Minnesota charges had been dropped. And I was like, oh my God, I had forgot all about that case. But here is an article from CNN confirming what Malcolm had to say. And it says prostitution charges involving... A minor against R. Kelly dropped in Minnesota, and this hit last night. Although there was another article after Malcolm had shared that information with me that may have been from the day before, but in any event, it says criminal charges in Minnesota against R&B singer R. Kelly were dropped Tuesday. Prosecutors announced on Tuesday, so today is Wednesday, so I guess the news came out yesterday. And it says Kelly was charged in 2019 by Hennepin County prosecutors with two counts of engaging in prostitution with a person under the age of 18. And I think the girl said that he had paid her $200 and gave her the ticket to get into the show. And so the prosecutor was quoted as saying, we believe then and continue to believe the victim survivor as to what Mr. Kelly did to her in this case. And we continue to hold the unwavering position that Mr. Kelly would likely be convicted of these charges if the case proceeded to trial. The Hennepin County Attorney's Office said in a statement, however, despite our belief in the victim survivor, we have decided to dismiss this case in light of the federal convictions of Mr. Kelly, for which he received lengthy federal prison sentences and will likely spend the rest of his life in prison. But we are rebuking that statement that he will not spend the rest of his life in prison. Okay, 
especially not behind these chicks like what they presented to the public okay nobody deserves to spend the rest of their life in prison um from what we have learned about this case i know there's still a lot of y'all out there with blinders on that haven't been watching all these videos you know with the transcript readings and the motions that you're still blindly following you know these different organizations um believe all women me too and all of them but anyway if you really followed the case you would know that this man does not deserve to spend the rest of his life in prison behind this mess so kelly 56 was convicted on federal misconduct charges in new york in 2021 in chicago last june and was sentenced to 30 years in prison kelly is appealing both convictions in September, Kelly was convicted of multiple federal CP charges in Chicago. He was sentenced in, to 20 years in prison in February for those convictions, 19 of which will be served concurrently with his other sentences, um, U.S. District Judge Harry D. Lennon Weber said. So the alleged victim in Minnesota, identified only as Jane Doe, issued a written statement through the office of her attorney, Gloria Allred. Hmm. Mm, 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 mm. Gloria, you batting zero at this point because nobody that you have represented has come out on top, honey. What's going on? Like, you need to go and retire. Anyway, child, Gloria. So, as a surviving, this is her statement, as a surviving victim of R. Kelly, I feel sad about the fact that Hennepin County Attorney's Office in Minnesota decided not to hold him accountable for what he did to me when I was a minor, she said. If there had been a criminal trial, I would have been willing to testify against R. Kelly, even though it wouldn't have brought any extra prison time for him, it would have given me closure. And then let's see, I think Jennifer Bonjean said, it's the right result for a number of reasons and Hennepin County prosecutors showed appropriate discretion. We were ready to defend this case, but are pleased we don't have to. Um, Kelly's attorney, Jennifer Bonjean said in a statement. So over with the civil case so happy that that's over and done with same with the chicago and maybe this um state attorney will step down like kim fox is not running for re-election good child it's just a whole bunch of chickens coming home to roost in this case like has anybody really took a win in any of this because i hear them chicks from the eastern district of new york case then um, moved out of the district attorney <laughs> roles and moved over or assistant u.s attorney roles and opened up a firm and i'm hearing that the firm ain't doing too good okay so look like i'm riding off into the sunset off of the name of r kelly has not benefited many people so the last video that i did on this chick from minnesota and her lawsuit was in april of last year and so there have been several motions filed. And let me see, because I got them all open here. So basically, in a nutshell, the judge said that they, um, the person in the Minnesota civil case and the criminal case wanted the judge to enter a default judgment and unlike the judges in Chicago who gave the default judgments in the Heather Williams case and the Midwest commercial funding cases, this judge said that they thought it would be unfair for him not to be able to come in, Mr. Kelly, not to be able to come in and defend himself and that they felt that he probably could come up with a reasonable defense to this lawsuit if it were to go to trial and so they basically said no we're not going to enter a default motion and they were going through there were a couple of motions in here where he was being served by someone in i guess they hired somebody in new york 
to go to the Brooklyn jail where he was at the MDC and formerly filed notice, but looked like the person just dropped it in the mail. So we still don't know if he ever got it. Uh, let's see what else. And then um, he actually did respond. I believe it was him that responded to this case. or it may have been Jennifer Bonjean, or they hired an attorney, but they were basically stating that, you know, he was going through the whole thing in the Eastern District of New York. He had the Chicago case. He's appealing both of those cases. And, you know, he just had a lot going on that he didn't have time to be dealing with this woman because he had bigger things going on in his life and that they wanted this whole case to be continued. Um, in this document here, what was the date? This was from May 12th of 2022. And this was a responsive motion, notice of motion and motion, um, Jane Doe versus Robert Kelly. And it was sent to the attorneys for Jane Doe. And it says, I will ask the court for an order at a hearing scheduled as follows. May 23rd, 2022 at 8.30 a.m. And then it says in the motion, I am asking the court for an order as follows, denying the other party's request for default judgment against me in the amount of $4 million. So child, she was trying to get $4 million too. It says that the default judgments are generally disfavored under Minnesota law as the goal of all litigation is to bring about judgments after trials on the merits, um, Taylor versus Stenick, which was a case heard in Minnesota in 1973. This is particularly true when there is indicated the possibility of a valid defense and where no substantial prejudice will result to the plaintiff if judgment is denied, if default judgment is denied. Okay, wait a minute. And then it says Jeffrey C. Brown, PLLC versus Gold Star Taxi and Transportation Service. And that was a case, I think that was a case that was heard on appeal. And it says the case deals with events that allegedly took place more than 20 years ago. No prejudice will result to plaintiff if defendant's judge, if default judgment is denied. And then it says, two, I'm asking the court to grant me a stay of these proceedings until the resolution of criminal cases. While the criminal cases are pending, I am unable to meaningfully participate in discovery. In this case, I will be sentenced in the Eastern District of New York on June 16, 2022. I will be going to trial in the Northern District of Illinois on August 1st, 2022. And then three, alternatively, I am asking the court to grant me a continuance to retain counsel in Minnesota so that I can answer or otherwise plead in the case. However, for the reasons set forth in my affidavit, I am presently unable to hire counsel and would need ample time to do so. And so this was Mr. Kelly responding finally to this person. And then... There was an acknowledgement saying, by presenting this form to the court, I certify that to the best of my knowledge, information, and belief, the following statements are true. I understand that if a statement is not true, the court can order a penalty against me, such as to pay money to the other party, pay court costs, and other penalties. One, the information I included in this form is based on facts and supported by existing law too i am not presenting this form for any improper person purpose i am not using this form to harass anyone cause unnecessary delay in the case or needlessly increase the cost of litigation three no judicial officer has said i am a frivolous litigant four there is no court order saying i cannot serve or file this form and five, the form does not contain any restricted identifiers or confidential information as defined in Rule 11 on, of the general rules of practice. 
And let's see. And then six, if I need to file restricted identifiers, confidential information or confidential document, I will use form 11. And then that was um, sent by Mr. Kelly. I guess he did get that letter from the lady, the server who mailed it. Like she was literally in New York, I think, and mailed it. So he did receive it and he did respond. So that is good. Let's see what this document is. Okay, it says, Notice I will ask the court for an order at a hearing schedule that's followed. So then there was a hearing on May 23rd, 2022 at 8.30 a.m. at the Minnesota Courthouse. And this is um, the motion... I am asking the court for an order as follows, and it says, one, denying the other party's request for default judgment against me in the amount of $4 million. So it looks like that's the same. Yeah, that looks like the same document they had in there twice. And then Samira Little is the person that served him, and that was on May 12th. Okay. Now let's see here, what is this document? I'm looking for the one that was from December. Okay, May 17th. This was a notice of withdrawal of application for default judgment and objection. And it says to Robert Sylvester Kelly, MDC Brooklyn, Please take notice that plaintiff, having been made aware of defendant's motion and affidavit in this matter that were filed on May 12, 2022, hereby withdraws her previously submitted application for default judgment under Rule 55.01. Plaintiff respectfully requests the court issue an order requiring defendant to file and serve his answer or other response to the amended complaint within 14 days and instructing the parties to confer and file a joint discovery plan pursuant to Minnesota um, rules of civil procedures within 30 days. And then it says objection. Further plaintiff objects to the stay of these proceedings requested by defendant in his May 12th filing so she don't want she didn't want a delay but i don't think she got what she wanted okay and then let's see what's this one then there was an affidavit of service what is that um Okay, here's the, the most important one. So this was the last filing on the case, and it was from December 6, 2022. And it says, um, inactive docket. Oops. Inactive docket. Um, the above cited case has been placed on the Hennepin County inactive docket for a period of not to exceed one year for the following reasons. Um, reason defendant is in prison for various charges and states he cannot defend himself. Please suspend for six months to allow the parties to determine the next course of action. And that was um, signed by the judge. And so the case was deactivated on November 30th, 2022. So what would be six months? December, October, November, December. Wait a minute. November, December, January, February, March, April, May. Okay, so coming up this month, it looks like it will be activated again. And hopefully they have found him some lawyers in Minnesota just in case um, this lady keeps trying to pursue this. And I'm sure she will since they dropped the case against him. And I think it'll be harder for her to prove it. Because where's her evidence? Like, where's her proof that any of this happened? <laughs> so anyway, guys, that's the status of the Minnesota civil case is that it is currently in inactive status for six months. And those six months should end in about two weeks. And the charges have been dropped in the 
criminal case. And then let's go over here and see. Oh, no, I think the next hearing in the Heather Williams and the Midwest commercial is May 23rd. But there was a hearing on the 15th. So let me pull that up and see exactly what happened at that hearing. Okay, so in the Heather Williams case, I think the last thing we talked about was the fact that uh, Mr. Kelly, you know, they had entered this order to vacate the $4 million judgment, and then they had these other hearings coming up. So, for example, they set the call to status, which I think I talked about. And then on May 4th, um, they were discussing appellate court mandate um, affirmed. And, you know, the appellate court basically said that Heather Williams had first dibs once, you know, everything was worked out, that she would have first dibs on getting the judgment and uh, let's see and that was uh, i don't know why they're saying affirm but with these these are just notes i don't see the actual document i don't know if i have to order the documents and pay for them or what to see exactly what was going on but every now and then they'll have comments and there were no comments on that particular one and then on may 10th was when they were supposed to have the next call and so one of the items that they discuss at may 10th it says execute or perform allowed once again it doesn't tell you who you know who this is in favor of and so the comment section says court likes juridic jurisdiction to entertain any motion for turnover where as a result of order entered by trial court vacating underlying judgment as void. And so I think they're ruling in Mr. Kelly's favor with that, basically saying that that they're not going to entertain this motion for turnover. And the motion for turnover, I believe, was issued by Midwest Commercial, who basically was saying that because they have the Williams default judgment had been vacated, then they now can collect this $4 million. And it sounds like they're saying it doesn't work that way. And then also on the call, it says... Um, the event description was strike or withdraw motion or petition allowed. Once again, we don't know who <laughs> is requesting this. And then in the comments, it says motion for turnover stricken. So somebody's not getting the money. Then um, the other event description was strike from motion call allowed. And then there were no comments regarding that. And the next call is the 24th. It's an open call um, with the judge, Patrick Hennigan. It's at 2 p.m. courtroom 2503. And I keep saying, anybody in Chicago who can get down there to that courtroom and see if you can get in the courtroom and sit in on this and see exactly what's going on. And then on June 13th, they have another scheduled call, and it says open call judicial officer Patrick Hennigan, and that will be at 1 p.m. in the same courtroom. Now let's go over here and see what's going on with Midwest Properties. Okay, so with the Mid, I keep saying Midwest Properties, guys, but it's Midwest Commercial Funding, and they are the people that own the, the building where Mr. Kelly housed his studio and they were suing him for back rent and for making modifications to the building without permission. And they basically started out just wanting like 300 and something thousand dollars, which would cover the back rent and for them to be able to tear out these um, walls and stuff like he had created bedrooms and um, you know, the area for the studio, bathrooms and all that stuff he had done. And they just wanted to get it back to, I guess it was a warehouse so that they could put it back on the market as a warehouse. And then, you know, he got arrested. He didn't respond. And they actually garnished his Chase bank account. It was either Chase or Bank of America. Anyway, they garnished his bank account. But then 
I think Steve Greenberg or whoever was on the case, he's gone through multiple lawyers on this lawsuit, but one of them um, had the money returned to him. And so at that point, you know, he got the de they got the default judgment and the judge awarded them $4 million, even though they were only seeking like $300,000, which was their actual losses. Okay, so when we pick up here, May 10th, um, it says file amendment, additional amended pleadings allowed. So somebody wanted to file some paperwork and the judge said, okay. And then also on that May 10th call, um, order to turn over funds, continue. So remember, they're trying to get the $4 million now that Heather Williams' um, lawsuit has been vacated. Then um, case assigned to a Zoom hearing allowed. Um, file amendment, additional amended pleadings allowed. And then there was a comment that says Kelly and Williams file response to motion for turnover. So remember when I was reading the updates on Heather Williams, they talked about this motion for turnover. So Heather Williams and and Mr. Kelly both filed motions. Um, Heather Williams basically doesn't want Midwest to get the money. And then Kelly is basically saying neither one of them deserved the money. And then also there was a strike from motion call allowed. Don't know what that means. And their next hearing is going to be on June 13th, open call with Judge Patrick Hennigan, same judge as Heather Williams at 1 p.m. And so, yeah, that's about it. It just keeps going and going and these lawyers keep running up the tally on their bills. So guys, that's it for me. Um, that's the update. Minnesota criminal case has been dropped. Minnesota criminal case and Heather Williams criminal case and Midwest commercial case. Um, the Minnesota one is on hold possibly until the end of this month. And then these other two cases are moving right along. They're having hearings. Um, Jennifer Bonjean is representing Mr. Kelly in those two cases out of Chicago and possibly has gotten somebody on the case in Minnesota. So I will keep checking back to see the latest status. Um, looks like June 13th is when we shall know something else in the Chicago cases, and then I'll check to see what's going on with the Minnesota case after May 30th. So guys, that's it for me. Go ahead, leave your comments below, rate the video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And until the next time, I shall talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.